Hey guys, how's it going? So welcome to Primo Ed. Okay, so this is a new video. It's on uh, the 2020 paper that we're covering right now. And I uh, just went through it. It's, it's a very, very brilliant paper. Okay, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, you can text me on this number if you have any uh, specific questions. Okay, what you're trying to do is on weekends would we'll actually answer uh, some of your questions there. So the questions can be anything um, to do with sciences. Uh, that's what we are catering for right now we're not doing anything else so if it's biology if it's physics if it's um just mathematics it's still fine you can send me uh over and then the more specific the question the more likely we'll feature the question in the uh, next weekend or when we do our video okay so um this was a very interesting paper i just went through it and uh, let's just get right to it so question 11 it uh, gives us this diagram it's the female reproductive system and then you're asked to um uh, name where the uh, so the way to identify where fertilization takes place. Okay, so this is a very common diagram. One of the things that I always uh, advise my students is uh, it's always good to know what part uh, means what. The, you should be able to identify all the all the um, parts in the in the uh, reproductive system for females and also for males okay so we're going to do that right now so see this one it's um is the is the uterus okay so it's the uterus and then d this one's they're called the fallopian tubes so fallopian tubes you have to double check the spelling i'm not really good uh, with spellings uh and um this one is uh they, they, they're called ovaries so these are the ovaries and you should also know uh what part uh you know you should also know uh, the function of each uh, and every part there so this this one is called cervix so a it's actually uh cervix most stu students they will think that this is vagina but it's not uh, one way to think of it is uh, immediately after the uterus you'd get the cervix and then here you'd get the the vagina opening so or vagina and uh, this cervix, you should know, it's uh, it's not uh, an, an opening, it's actually a tube. So on, on the female reproductive system, you have uh, two openings there, uh, excluding the, the anus because it's not part of the uh, reproductive system. So the, the anus will be there and you'll also be having uh, the vagina and you'll also be having the urethra. The urethra is for urine, uh, the urethra is for urine, the vagina is for passage of uh, sperm into the uh, uterus. And also the, the anus, it's for, for defecation, okay? So uh, this, this is just about it uh, for uh, uh, this part. And then on the fallopian tubes, these are uh, what they do is they are a canal. So the canal, which facilitate the, the movement of uh, this egg here into the uh, uterus, okay? So it actually moves and then it stops here uh, at D for some time. And then uh, sperm actually uh, goes in and um, the, in the fallopian tube, that's where you have uh, uh, normal fertilization taking place. But then they should also just uh, move afterwards when it's a uh, it's, it's a zygote. So when the uh, sperm cell sperm cell and the and the ovum we call it ovum. Okay, so ovum it's uh, it's egg for in humans and of you just uh, so you know this one it's egg in in plants. Okay, so uh, the ovum and the sperm they. I unite and then the zygote, the ovary produces ovum, the ovum moves into the fallopian tube, the sperm will be moving uh, through the cervix upwards and then the fertilization will take place in the uh, fallopian tubes, okay? So the fallopian tube, this is where fertilization take place, takes place and uh, in the uterus, that's where you see uh, implantation. Okay, so this is, uh, you'll be, uh, the body will be preparing for the, for the, uh, fetus to actually grow so it to be zygote at some point it will uh, be fetus okay so the uterus uh, it has that that purpose so the ovaries just like i told you they uh, produce ovum and ovum moves through the uh, fallopian tubes to uh, the uterus so the fallopian tubes that's where fertilization takes place the uterus that's where implantation takes place okay so uh, it's also the uh, site for for development this uterus uh, and uh, that's just about it. Sometimes uh, the fetus can grow in the in the fallopian tubes. 
or somewhere else really and uh, that's called ectopic pregnant so ectopic pregnancy okay so ectopic simply means abnormal so when uh, a, a, a fetus uh, or when a zygote uh, develops in, in the in the fallopian tube the pregnancy is not viable so it actually happens uh, with um, uh, women who have uh, a condition called PID so it's called uh, when for it to be pelvic inflammatory disease okay so it's also caused um, a little bit uh, by smoking so if you smoke too much you're likely to have like two big pregnancies so yeah so don't smoke it's uh, it's not good but uh, fertilization so we've identified it happens in the in the fallopian tubes here remember you should be able to explain this very well uh, label all the parts and also just draw in general okay so that's just about it let's move to uh, the next question next question it's, it's a diagram of an embryo so we're still on uh, sexual reproduction uh, attached to to the placenta which arrows a b c or d shows the movement of um, of nutrients so one one of the ways you to answer this is to identify uh, the role of nutrients in the in the growth of a, of, a, of a fetus okay so of an embryo this time it's an embryo so they are uh, nutrients they're actually required by the by the um, embryo so you are actually expecting an arrow that's going into uh, the fetus okay so this is the uh, umbilical uh, cord going inside and this is the network that you find uh, the placenta it's it's got uh, a very rich network of um, uh, veins uh, that uh, supply uh, the placenta has got uh, a very rich network of uh, capillaries blood capillaries that supply these nutrients and also oxygen so you're looking at a a should be the should be the the answer and then just so you know the placenta and the uh, uh, there's something called the amniotic sac this these are different okay so the amniotic sac you can think of it in shona it'd be saga so what what, what it simply means is um it's uh it's it's a it's a thin it's a very thin envelope and this envelope it uh, has some fluid and it also serves a different function than the placenta the placenta gives nourishment so the placenta is the one that's supplying this capillaries here you can see from the placenta but the amni amniotic sac it uh, it gives mechanical protection okay so mechanical protection or mechanical support So the, the child will be able to grow, to breathe, and to, to move around, okay? So through this uh, amniotic sac and uh, the placenta, that's where you uh, have uh, nourishment. And th this is a, a very elaborate strategy, and it's more complicated than uh, this, this diagram is letting on. And the basic idea of it all is that the, the fetus has, um, if you remember in sexual reproduction, you actually have the fetus having distinct genome than the than the father and the in the mother than the parents so the fetus has its own uh, dna so this one is embryo it has its own dna so the, the mother's uh, immune system can just attack this baby because that's what the immune systems do they identify foreign objects then they attack so placenta and the amniotic sac they're part of an elaborate scheme by the body to actually uh, prepare or to actually make pregnancy viable without the mother attacking the, the the embryo okay so yeah that's just about it let's see if we can move to question 13 question 13 says hormones that are found um, in contraceptive pills they work by okay so in, a, in the contraceptive pill uh the contraceptive pill by the way it's called uh, this one is called hormonal contraception so they actually you should know all the all the types of contraception uh the others they include um, you have uh, what's called uh, bio methods so you should know so for example condoms so you also have um your bio methods you also have uh, permanent birth control as well permanent birth control permanent birth control you're looking at maybe vasectomy and uh, you also have uh, this hormonal contraception that, that we that we have talked about here. You can look up. There might be uh, some other uh, ways of uh, birth control as well. There is natural or rhythm, the it rhythm method, where you study the your uh, a woman studies 
her own menstrual cycle so that she identifies when it's reasonably safe for her to have unprotected sex um, without, uh, you know, like a very high risk of pregnancy, okay? So essentially, a birth control, pews, they pick in the, the mucus of uh, the civics. Remember that opening that I told you, the tubular opening? That's the passage for, for sperm. So birth control, pews, they, they uh, trigger the thickening of the mucus in the civic so that sperm cannot cannot enter okay so that's um uh, uh, that's one part but then they also there's also another part they actually suppress ovulation okay so they prevent the the behavior they prevent the maturing uh of uh, the egg killing sperm in the in the oviduct killing sperm uh in the oviduct here yeah, this so this one is different you can look at um uh copper iud there's a uh, called uh, biomethods okay so you can have the diaphragm as well so the uh, copper copper it's a, it's a it's a very uh useful metal in that uh, it kills um um tiny living things okay so even in hospitals right now you have uh hospitals especially high profile ones which are retrofitted with uh copper and traditionally people have always known that's why you see uh copper the um cups may made from from copper they are comparatively expensive than than any other material just because they they kill gems no well, not all of them but then you are actually safer drinking from a copper cup than uh, any other cup okay so that's the function of uh, copper iud so they just put uh, a, a, some some sort of coil there uh, and then the coil actually kills spam so that the spam is not viable and then thereby you you don't have fertilization to begin with okay so preventing fertilization of uh, of the egg there's also that and then preventing implantation of the of the embryo this one it's it's, it's different as well so they did this this these three answers there they're, they're kind of uh, close to one another but then the main um uh use of uh, hormonal contraception is to prevent the ma the maturing uh, of an egg okay so it's it's more complicated usually they they use uh, uh estrogen and progesterone so in uh, very specific proportions so you would have that some sometimes the, it's actually synthetic versions of the of the hormone so they suppress ovulation uh it would be just a little bit on the on the brief history so they we had um uh, scientists would discover that if you take um hormones from from pregnant uh, uh rabbits and then put them into our uh, fetal rabbits then the fetal rabbits would not get pregnant so they actually realized that you can manipulate the uh, menstrual cycle so that uh, you can have desirable results so desirable in the sense that uh, uh, for someone who doesn't want to uh, get pregnant then they'll be able to uh, circumvent that okay so that's that's just about it and essentially these this one and this one a and c they were very close but I think the the best answer there is uh, preventing uh, the maturing of uh, of the egg. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, that's just about it. Let's move to the next part. So question fourteen says, what is the effect of HIV on the human body? HIV makes it easy for pathogens to invade cells. Let's hold on to this. HIV reduces the body's uh, resistance to infection. Obviously, this is not it, because uh, otherwise it wouldn't be uh, a, a deadly virus. Okay, so. Uh, it's not it so hiv reduces the the number of um, red blood cells i'm saying deadly in the sense that uh, when full-blown hiv causes aids which is deadly okay hiv reduces the number of red blood cells this is not true it doesn't affect red blood cells in any way uh hiv destroys all body tissues this is not true okay so it actually sets up the conditions for pathogens to invade our cells um so they uh, it does that by suppressing the immune system so this this one would be the correct answer okay so you have to be very careful with this one the way that it was worded and also the choices they were kind of um, a little bit tricky okay so that's just about it let's see if we can answer one more and then we'll continue uh, in the next video so the which method is used to produce concentrated so concentrated uh, uh, ethanol from dilute ethanol solution so here separation techniques you should know this topic because it's very popular especially in paper one okay so which method would you use filtration you're looking at uh, solid and liquid uh, mixture and then decanting uh, it's different and then sim uh, simple distillation not yet but uh, fractional distillation now that's more like it and what you should be asking yourself right now is why fractional distillation why not just simple distillation 
Well, it has to do with the boiling point. So fractional distillation is separating by boiling uh, points. Okay, so um, mixtures that have um, similar boiling points, the components of those mixtures, if they have similar boiling points, then you, you can uh, use fractional distillation. We use uh, simple distillation when the boiling points are vastly different for the mixture. So you can have um, you can use simple distillation for maybe uh, salt and uh, uh, and water solution. Okay, why? Because uh, the uh, salt you can always collect it at the bottom. Uh, the boiling point for salt it's it's vastly vastly high, higher than the boiling point of, of water. Okay, so fractional distillation. Why? Because ethanol boiling point at uh, one atmosphere, which means uh, with the uh, sea level, it's it's about uh, seventy eight. Okay, so for water, you're looking at uh, around hundred degrees Celsius, and uh, you, should, you should also know uh, what the what's the boiling point of, of, of water on average in Zimbabwe. Because Zimbabwe is actually on average 300 meters above uh, sea level. Okay, so just look that up and then uh, make sure that you know that. So yeah, this is uh, this was quite interesting and that's just about it for this question. For these questions, please make sure you like, share and subscribe. It helps others um, discover our channel.